Um, congratulations to you two. Uh, really, like when you found out about this story or got the script, what was your initial reaction? Are you believers? Well, first off, like I had seen Insidious and I loved Insidious and I thought the script was great and I love scary movies. So I was just completely down for the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, if you're an actor, you have to be a believer in every in every script, whether it's, you know, true or not, because that's that's your job. You got to go tell the story to to the audience and let them have that experience. There is an added element when, because uh, some of them, it's like well, there's an acceptance of like, oh, this is fiction, and we all know this is fiction, and there you go. This one, all the major players involved feel that this is a thing that really happened. You know, this is their experience, and uh, so I think we're trying to honor that. Yeah, and uh, and present it that way to the audience. Ultimately, the audience is gonna different people are gonna come in, but I'll guarantee you the the hardest you know most scientific minded skeptic in the world after seeing this movie is gonna be a little nervous getting out of his car in a dark driveway. Yeah. You know? Well, for me, I mean, it was The Exorcist that scared me. I mean, what was it for <laughs> you? What was the first film? Do you remember? Um, I think I think Exorcist for me. It's it's my it's yeah. I mean, this is coming. This is maybe gonna. Rise above it. Okay. I remember The Shining. The Shining was the one that got that got me earliest. Yeah, they're ugh, scary stuff. Yeah. Um, having somebody like Lorraine Warren, I guess, at your fingertips to have around. Did you guys take advantage of like sitting down and talking to her to get her real life experience, or was it important maybe not to talk to her so much? The latter for me, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I felt like Patrick and Vera had to. You know, that was their thing, and um, it just didn't feel right to go. It was from a distance. So nice, you know respect but your first job in a scary movie for the first 30 pages is to not know you're in a scary movie that's part of the fun is that the audience has you know they've seen the poster and they see the credit sequence so they have an inkling of what's gonna happen but the characters really have no idea what they're in for so you know it makes it a little tricky but you want to sort of prepare to know as little as possible about what's going on so it can all take you by surprise. Yeah, You take a beating in this movie yeah. like I've Ooh, never yeah. seen before. What kind of prep did you have to do to even get psychologically prepared for this role? Sure. Um, well, vocally, I had to figure out a way to scream without killing my voice. So I had to do a whole vocal thing. So I had some vocal exercises. Um, I knew I needed to be in shape. And um, and I knew I needed to do warm-ups and uh, eat right, sleep right. Really like a physical thing, like a marathon, really, like a training. You know, that's what it was and I felt totally up to it I was totally fine you know yeah wow it was wow I mean, what was it like watching her go through well, some of these scenes I'll tell you it was a big part of the reason that I I was excited to sign on and do this movie one because I saw Insidious and two because I knew that Lily when I signed on Lily was already on board to play this role it's a pivotal role in the thing you know what I mean that's not it's not easy work to do and if it's not good the movie doesn't work you know what I mean? Like you can do whatever you can do with CGI and masks, but ultimately it comes down, you know, to how good, you know, The Exorcist is great because Linda Blair is great. Um, and this movie is great because Lily Taylor is great in that part. And, and I knew she would be. Yeah, you both were saying about how much you loved Insidious, they'd seen it, and you know, what is it about James Wan in that brain? Like, good he is question. so good at this stuff. Yeah, he is. His whole team, and I think there's something that he really caught on to is, is when you find when you find a good thing, you stick with it. Yeah. He has worked with the designers on this. Cinematographer. Uh, phenomenal, his editor, his cinematographer. He, he's a collaborator, he yeah. really is. And I think that's part of what, he, what makes him great, is he knows how to listen to others. Um, but he, he knows the psyche really well, I think. I think he knows humans, you know? And I think he also is going from himself. He says if, if he doesn't get scared, and while well, he's working on the script, he, he keeps redoing it until he's scared working on the script. So he's putting himself empathy. He's got empathy. That's one of the things. Yeah, and when you're working on a film like this, does anything creepy actually happen on set? Not on this one. Um, not on this one. I think we had a guardian angel going into this one. I was saying earlier, it's like I had a little thing where a week before I left, I, I fell down, on, I fell off a ladder and down a flight of stairs. And I, halfway down the stairs, I was like, all right, I, I'm probably not going to be able to go do this movie when I land because I don't know what's going to. And I was fine. So I think after that, I felt like, all right, you know, somebody's looking out for me. I, I think I, I 
I got off easy on this one. It had, it had that feel. I think that. a lot of those stories you hear a lot of times when the director's not well, uh, you know, Coppola, Apocalypse Now, Friedkin, Exorcist, James is, is really stable, you know, and, and, and that it's like daddy or mommy, our parent is running a really sound household. You it's know? part of the lore of both this movie and the vampire movies or something that, uh, you know, those spirits have to be, you get, they have to be invited in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we told this story, but we were very, very careful about not inviting anything yeah. in. We yeah. wouldn't have gotten our job done, really. You don't we want only had around. 30 days or something, not yeah. a year. Yeah, no, no. Around yeah, on this right, one. Exactly. Okay, you had five great young actresses playing your daughters. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Gift. Uh, really, each one was better than the next. They were all yeah. so amazing. How yeah. on earth? You know, listen, I get it. You're making a movie, but really, were they not creeped out? Like, how did you guys keep them, com you know, comfortable? They kept us comfortable. Yeah. Really, I'm not kidding. It's that kid spirit. It's that. It's that. Uh, that resiliency. That ability to just move on. They're playing games. They're full of joy. They're singing. You know, they helped the crew. Yeah. We didn't have to help them. Yeah, they brought kind of a life and an energy to it. And they took care of each other, too. I was really proud yeah. that, you know, especially the two older girls who, you know, they're, they're like adult young women and, right. and uh, working a 12-hour day. And at the end of the day, they would take the little girls, you know, back to their rooms and play games with them or go, go out to dinner with them and stuff. And I it hope just, they didn't play clap clap. No, no clap, I don't clap, think clap, they played clap, clap clap. No, there was oh, patty yeah. cake, but no clap yeah. clap. <laughs> Yeah, okay. That game is no more. Uh -huh. yeah. It's been ruined. I don't think I could ever play. I've never even heard of that, but I don't think I'd ever in my life now want to no. play that game. Exactly. My goodness. Um, so, you know, you both have been making films for a little while here, sure. but I want to ask you first, Lily, what was the role that changed your life? Mine, um, there wasn't one. I mean, I, the, I can't, I don't, I, there wasn't one. I mean, there was some that I had, like, I shed and do. Warhol was a very collaborative experience and, and fulfilling, but Arizona Dream with Amir Kusturisa took a year and that, so I have, each one is special to me, yeah. like a child, you know? Yeah, how about for you, Ron? They all do a little bit. You know, I know that's kind of a cop-out answer, but they all, I, if you're doing it right, there's no reason to do any, there's no reason to play a part unless it's gonna change your life somehow. Right. You know, there was one call, I'll pick one that, uh, called Holly that I think was, uh, that kind of was a dramatic, drastic mm -hmm. shift. But, uh, and, but this one was, uh, you know, I wouldn't have expected that this one would change my life in the way it did, but it really did. And very quickly, did you ever want to go back and visit the real house? No. No, I don't play with that stuff. It's not yeah. a joke to me. No way. Yeah. No, I don't need to. Yeah, you've been there, done that. Yeah. You guys yeah. did a phenomenal job in this movie. Really Thank scared you. the crap out of me.